Hi, I'm Isaac. You might know me as the Vividen. One of the questions I receive most often on the channel is why does paleontology matter? I reached out to the experts for their opinions. Please enjoy. Hi, my name is Dr. Brian Curtis, and I'm a dinosaur paleontologist out of Arizona. And I've got to say, I love paleontology, and I think it's the best discipline around because it encapsulates so many different avenues of expertise. Geology, the deep time, as well as knowing what the rocks, sandstone, limestone, igneous rocks, what are the stories telling where you find the bones. Then I love excavating the bones. Here I am ripping one out of the ground, big giant sauropod. Then you take it to the lab and you learn preparation techniques. And while you're working this whole time, you're thinking anatomy, behavior, biogeography, ecosystems. These animals were once living animals, and it's so much fun to extrapolate what's going on today back into the past. So it allows you to travel to zoos, museums, see the world. Paleontology lets you work with other people who are experts in other disciplines. And it's truly a team effort to bring these animals back to life. So if you like working with people, you like becoming a specialist in an area, or you like to be a generalist, paleontology is a little bit of something for everyone. I'm Dr. Brian Curtis, and thank you kindly. Welcome to paleontology. Adios. My name is Dr. Ray Wilhite. I am a vertebrate paleontologist, and <clears throat> I study sauropod dinosaurs like those you can see on the wall at Dinosaur National Monument here in my background. I am particularly interested in limb bones like this beautiful thing right here. I decided to be a paleontologist when I was in second grade. And believe it or not, I know every second grader wants to be a paleontologist. I actually followed through with that. Um, but I also have developed an interest in functional morphology and uh, anatomy. And so I am the, currently the anatomy lab coordinator for the vet school at Auburn University. And the thing I love about paleo is it allows me to, it gives me a way to explain why animals are the way they are. I can look back at their evolutionary history and see how they've changed over time. I can relate that to the students in a way that, that none of the other faculty members here at the university um, really can because they only study modern things. Um, and I hope that I'm able to inspire young people to be interested in science. So I think it's probably been said a bunch of times, but I consider vertebrate paleontology to be the gateway drug to science for children. And in fact, as soon as I get through recording this video, I'm going to talk to 153rd graders today about vertebrate paleontology. And I hope that I can inspire at least one or two of them um, to maybe pursue this as a career. Um, but I personally think that it's, it's opened so many doors for me and allowed me to do so many things. I'll be forever grateful um, to vertebrate paleontology and to all the great vertebrate paleontologists who have given me opportunities throughout the years. Hello, everyone. I'm Dave Krause, a curator of vertebrate paleontology at the Denver Museum of Nature and Science. I was asked by Isaac to share some thoughts on why paleontology matters. So, I could compile a long list of ways in which paleontology is important and relevant in today's world. Things like the lessons of extinction, the relevance of fossils to the creation evolution debate, what studies of paleoclimatology can tell us about current climate change, how biostratigraphy helps guide exploration for fossil fuels, how it can use the fascination of dinosaurs to teach children how to learn in school, and so on. There are clearly many, many ways in which paleontology is both important and relevant today. But in actuality, I really don't like to force the issue. It's part of the human condition to be curious. And I don't think we need to apologize for the fact that much of what we do as paleontologists is in fact not particularly relevant in today's world. However, we might try to sell ourselves as applied scientists, the vast majority of us aren't. We're simply fascinated with past life. It's what drives us, and I don't feel it's necessary to justify that fact through the cloak of relevance. And that's it. That's what I think. Hello, my name is Evan Johnson Ransom. I am a vertebrate paleontologist and PhD student at the University of Chicago, and my research focuses on defeating behavior of meat-eating theropod dinosaurs like T-Rex. 
Growing up, I've always wanted to be a paleontologist, and I owe a lot of that to my grandmother and mother who helped feed my passion. I think dinosaurs and paleontology act as a gateway science of kids in introducing them to the life and evolutionary history of prehistoric animals like dinosaurs. Not only that, but paleontology is also a multifaceted field, introducing kids to other fields of science, ranging from biology, chemistry, physics, and field science. My name is Kyle Atkins Waltman. I am a PhD student. I study paleoecology, specifically of end Cretaceous terrestrial ecosystems. I study because, well, dinosaurs are pretty dang cool, and that time period is the very last time we see the non avian dinosaurs. But paleontology itself is important for humanity because without it, we don't understand the origins of life as we know it, the origin of organisms that we know today, and we see responses to things like rapidly changing climate, which is vital to understanding what's going on today and predicting the future. Without understanding paleontology, we cannot understand ourselves. Hi, I'm Matt Wadel. I'm an anatomist and a paleontologist, and in addition to going on dinosaur digs, I also teach human anatomy at a medical school here in Southern California. And I think a lot about how doctors interact with their patients. When a doctor enters the room, the first things that they need to establish are to take a physical exam to see how the patient's doing at the moment, but also to get a history, to put that information in context and understand how the patient's been doing over time. Now we, human beings, our civilization, we are embedded in a biosphere and we're dependent on that biosphere for our survival, but we don't really know all the rules by which it operates. And we can do a physical exam with disciplines like hydrology and meteorology and ecology to understand what's going on right now. But if we want the patient history, if we want to understand how the biosphere operates over the long term, how it responds to perturbations, that information is only accessible through geology and paleontology. So even if we're only narrowly interested in our own survival, we should still be interested in the past. But in fact, we human beings have always been driven to explore and to understand the universe. And the universe is expansive, not just in space, but also in time. Now, our current world doesn't have any new continents left to discover. No more undiscovered islands. It's all been mapped. But the world of the past has, the worlds of the past, have innumerable mysteries to solve, realms to explore, and those of us who are called to explore find a road there uh, that leads us into an area that we can make progress, find out new things, contribute to human knowledge, and satisfy our own curiosity. I'm an explorer at heart, and that's what keeps drawing me to paleontology. To me, the allure of paleontology is that it is a science that is well known of, but it's not particularly well known. A vast majority of the population knows about prehistoric animals existing. A decent number of the population know that we are aware of such life forms because of the fossils we excavated. A smaller percentage of the population knows the science of studying fossils is called paleontology. I still regularly meet people thinking it's archaeology. And an even smaller piece of the population have any idea of how much we can find out about the past. Many times they think everything is just guesswork. So being able to take a concept that a layperson might be familiar with, like a saber tooth, and being able to expand on it by so many fascinating ways in ecology, behavior, life history, evolutionary past, all to show just how much we know, the material is old, but it never gets old to talk about it because there's always something new to discover. Why well, study paleontology? I'm going to leave it for others to make points about how it's a, a gateway science into other things and how it can potentially give us insights into um, how the world is going at the moment with climate change and extinctions. All of that is important, but I also want to make another point. You don't need a reason to do something beautiful. I mean, why create art? Why write novels? Uh, we don't necessarily, when we think about that, we don't think about the, the economic effect of novel writing. We just think about the fact that it enriches the human spirit, um, that it brings something beautiful into people's lives. And for me, 
that's the main reason to study paleontology because extinct animals are just fascinating and beautiful and I mean look here we go right here here's a sauropod what's better than that that's enough that's got to be enough we study paleontology because it's fantastic and I love paleontology not just because it teaches us about the ancient world or because it shows us where we came from but because it is just super awesome just like Mike and David said we don't need to defend the need to study paleontology it's worth it on its own to be curious as human beings and to explore more about the natural world thank you for watching please subscribe for more videos and paleontologist collaborations like this and have a great day